You know, platform engineering as a title, uh, as a role is fairly new, but the concepts are really not. And I think uh, it was time to kind of bring a lot of ideas together, something that we've been learning about for a long time, and just really talk about the product management mindset. Why does platform engineering need to have a product management mindset to really be successful? Um, so really excited to talk about that. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, really quickly, my name is Ganesh. I'm one of the co-founders and CTO of Cortex. Uh, Cortex is an internal developer portal, though I like to think about it as a platform for engineering excellence. Uh, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about, you know, why do I say platform engineering needs a product management mindset, walk you through some specifics, and uh, hopefully there's some interesting takeaways at the end of this. So I don't want to bore you to death with the definitions of things, but I feel like it's always good to start with uh, just what are we talking about. So we talk about product management. The goal of product management is to really solve customer needs, right? Your customers may be internal, they may be external, but as a product manager, you're fundamentally trying to solve customer needs, and specifically in service of key business outcomes, right? If you're a product manager at a uh, consumer app, maybe you're thinking about MAUs or DAUs or revenue or something else, but that's the kind of key North Star metric that you're working towards. And that gets turned into, well, how do we solve our customer needs and make sure that we're, we're producing the right outcomes? So this is what product management is at its core. And so from an engineering standpoint, you know, what are the key business outcomes that we care about? Right? It, it, it's helpful to frame the conversation around what does the business care about and how does that translate down into the things that we do as engineers? So I like to bucket it into three big areas. Innovation and time to market. So how do we ship more, ship faster, get things out faster? We want to stay competitive and we don't want to lose our edge. So innovating, super important. Quality and customer experience. Uh, this is generally true for most organizations, but you can think about you know, financial institutions or apps where a minute of downtime is costing you millions of bucks, you have high SLAs, whatever that might be. Reliability, that quality, the customer experience really, really matters. And then finally, especially in today's environment, cost and efficiency is top of mind as well. And I wanted to include this one in particular because that is a key business outcome today, right? Maybe it's not serving the customer needs specifically, but as a business, this is one of the key North Star metrics that a lot of organizations are thinking about. And none of these things are mutually exclusive. In many cases, those things are connected together by investing in reliability. Maybe we're improving our customer experience and we're making, helping ourselves go to market faster because we're not spending as much time fixing bugs or whatever that might be. So there's a lot of overlap. But at its core, these are kind of the three key business outcomes that we care about. From there, I like to th talk about engineering excellence, right? Engineering excellence is kind of a broad topic, but every organization is thinking about how do we as an engineer engineering organization operate at the highest levels possible? And engineering excellence can be broken down into quite a few areas. It starts with ownership and accountability. So do we actually know who owns what, who's accountable for what? You can define all the best practices you care about and drive all the initiatives you care about, but if no one's accountable, you're just screaming into the void. So starting with ownership and accountability. From there, you know, you have reliability, operational readiness, security and compliance, standardization and guardrails. All of these things kind of make up the different pillars of what I call engineering excellence. And these things, again, may ebb and flow throughout the organization's life. Uh, but usually from an engineering excellence standpoint, this is how organizations think about it. And over time, as organizations mature, each of these things kind of get broken up into individual areas, right? You think about security and compliance, you have teams for that. Reliability, you have your SRE teams, standardization and guardrails, you have your platform teams, your cloud infra teams, and so on and so forth. So each of these different uh, initiatives get turned into individual teams and focus areas. And these are the things where if we invest in these things as an organization, it will help us achieve those outcomes that we care about as a business. And so the question is, what enables all of this, right? If these are the things that we care about as an engineering organization, and we all agree that those things will help us achieve the business outcomes, then what is the thing that enables those initiatives in the first place? And that's what we believe platform engineering is. Platform engineering is building that foundation that enables you to then go and work on those initiatives across engineering excellence. That includes everything from developer experience, developer self-service, platform foundations. All of these things enable those org-wide engineering excellence initiatives. And at the core, platform, engineering's, platform engineers are building that foundation for engineering excellence. And so starting to make that segue into product management, I think what's really interesting is that platform engineering is the intersection of three core practices. Like I said, the idea has been around for a long time, even though the name of platform engineering might be fairly new. You have developer experience, which is how do we take the initiatives that we care about 
and turn them into great experiences so that our developers are happy and we're enabling, enabling them to do the things that we know are right for the business. There's a product management mindset, which is we have internal customers and we need to build products for our internal customers to enable them to do their jobs. And finally, you kind of have the traditional DevOps mindset, which is how do we enable all these things? How do we build automation and tooling and all those kinds of things that have been subsumed into the kind of technical aspects of platform engineering as well? And so at the center of this all is, as you can imagine, with the title of this talk and what, probably why you're here, is platform engineering. We're trying to bring all these practices together, and that has turned into the platform engineer. And so you're taking, in the developer experience and DevOps side of the world, folks who are traditionally not product managers and tasking them with solving big picture organization-wide problems to solve business outcomes. And I think that's where there's a lot of risk that comes with that. And so I actually want to start with the failure modes of product management, because one of the ways I like to think is like, what are all the things that can go wrong? How do you make sure those things don't happen? And that helps you understand the success as well. So some of the failure modes that we think about, assuming what the end user needs, right? You just think, I know, that, I know the end user. Let me just build what I think they need. And if you build it, they will come. This is a fallacy in every aspect of product management ever. There's very few people in the world who probably have that kind of intuition with their users. And for the most part, you probably want to talk to your users in the first place. The second thing is losing sight of business outcomes. You can build the most beautiful product, the best user experience, and maybe it's super innovative. But if it's not solving a business outcome, nobody cares, right? In the startup world, we call this product market fit. You know, it's uh, are you actually driving the value that you care about that started this initiative in the first place? From there, I think another thing we think about is focusing on just one end user instead of all the personas that consume your product, right? You think about, for example, a two-sided marketplace problem. If you're building a two-sided marketplace, you can't just build for one persona and ignore the other, right? You're never going to actually solve that problem. You need to think about both sides of that equation. The same thing is true for any product, right? If there are multiple personas that use your product, you can focus solely on one of them and ignore the rest. And I'll talk about this uh, in the platform engineering scope in, in specific in just a second. And then finally, this one I think, we, we talk about this all the time from an agile mindset and things like that, but it's really around products fail when you try to build everything at once instead of delivering incremental value. How do I find the, the minimal viable product or the minimal valuable product is the way I think, like to think about it. It's not just viable, it's valuable. Are you actually producing value for your end users? And can you do that incrementally? Can you actually show people the value of your product, bring them into the fold, and then take them with you on that journey? And that helps you solve some of these other problems as well. If you've shown your end users value, then they will tell you what they want, and you can build more of it, and it creates a great feedback loop. And th these are some of the failure modes of product management. So from there, enter platform as a product. And so let me talk a little bit about, from those failure modes, how do we think about what good product platform engineering looks like? So the first example I like to talk about is automation and self-service. One of the most common things we see with platform engineering is you tend to think about like self-service experiences as, hey, these are the friction points of the organization. Let me go build a bunch of self-service experiences around that. Or this is what I think is friction. Let me go build self-service and automation around that. But I think what's really important is going back to that first slide, what is the business outcome we care about? Maybe let's say we want to get to market faster. OK, first ask the question, what is stopping us from going to market faster right now? There's probably a whole slew of things that are slowing you down. Take that, turn those into the engineering excellence initiatives, right? Are there things on the, on the reliability side that are slowing us down? Are there things from the security side that are slowing us down? Are there things from a standardization practices that are slowing us down? What are those things? And can we work backwards? Because then you can say, hey, this self-serve thing that we're working on, that actually enables a business outcome that we're working towards. And it helps you scope that product experience much, much better. And so really think about the self-serve experiences and automation in service of the outcomes that you're trying to solve for. The second thing is working really closely with cross-functional partners. right? Every one of those initiatives I talked about earlier, you have other stakeholders who are looking to consume your platforms as well. And I have some examples of this on the next slide that I'll talk about. But I think it's very important to bring SRE and security and cloud infra and all those other organizations into the fold. Because as the platform team, your role is to enable them and help them enable their end users. Because you're all serving the same users at the end of the day. right? You're all trying to go and serve the end developer. And so if you can come together and solve for those use cases together, you're going to be much more effective. And 
On that perspective, the other thing to talk about is the personas, right? There's three, actually three personas that you should think about from a platform engineering mindset. There's a developer who's actually consuming your products. There's the core central teams like SRE and security and yourselves as platform engineers. And then they're the ones who are tasked with these big initiatives and say, go solve it, go solve reliability, go solve security. And you have to go and try to influence your developers to make those things happen, because you can't actually do those things yourself. And then if engineering leadership who says, I don't care about the nitty gritty detail, I don't care about the individual microservices, I care about the business outcome. So how are the things that I'm investing in actually driving those outcomes? So can your platform actually ser serve all of those personas together? We talked about delivering incremental value. You don't have to build the entire platform all at once, right? I think that's one of the other fallacy that we see is like, oh, we're going to spend two years building out the platform, and then we're going to go to our customers and deliver it to them. But no, there's probably aspects of that that you can start, start delivering today and start delivering that incremental value. And then finally, this is kind of ties back to that last bullet point, which is don't think about your platform as one big thing. It's not one big platform, right? Your platform is actually a collection of best of breed capabilities, right? It's, it's the infrastructure provisioning, it's the service cataloging, it's the ownership, it's the security, it's the automation. Each of those things have different components, different friction points, and that's different from organization to organization, right? Just going in and saying, hey, let me go and follow all the platform best practices, it's probably not gonna get you very far. But really thinking about what is the outcome that we care about, what are the friction points for our organization, and how do I solve that through the platform is the right way to think about it. So think about your platform as a collection of tools that at the end are then delivered to your end users. And so I want to talk about some of those like business outcome related thoughts, right? And so as you're thinking about working with stakeholders, because I think it's a very unique perspective on how to think about platform engineering. So let's start with reliability and SRE. Reliability and SRE, they care about, is our app up, is it reliable, are we causing downtime for our customers? That's expensive, right? We want a great customer experience that we talked about. And so SRE is thinking about when something goes wrong, how do we make sure that our teams have the ability to very quickly deploy new versions, roll back their software, scale things up? You can see that now there's a very close tie into the platform you're building and the things that SRE cares about, right? SREs cannot do their job if your platform does not enable them to give their developer those tools. And so you can actually enable the reliability outcomes you care about as an organization by partnering with SRE and making sure that the experiences you're building are taking into account their outcomes as well. Automation for runbooks, another great example, is your platform built in a way that SRE can actually go in and automate the remediation steps that need to happen. Golden paths, right? We talk about this a lot. This is a very core part of platform engineering. We want to give our developers golden paths for new services, new infrastructure, and so on. But if you're just doing that saying like, hey, let me go and build a great developer experience and give people a golden path that makes it easy to get started, that's not enough, right? You want to make it easy to get started with something that follows all the best practices that SRE cares about when something goes into production. Right? So from day one, is it pre-wired up with the right metrics? Does it have the right automation built in? Does it have the right visibility built in? Now, SRE is a core champion of the self-service capabilities you're building. They say, hey, if you want SRE support, go and use the stuff the platform team's building. They've built a great bootstrap uh, starter for your projects. Go use that instead. That's going to be the best way for you to get SRE support and get your product into, pr into production as quickly as possible. The same thing is true for security, right? You think about developer self-service workflows. One of the things that we always see all the time is uh, just-in-time credentials. Maybe your security team is starting to enforce more practices around, hey, we don't want to just open up our database and let everyone go and access it. We want to give people 15 minutes of read-only access to an obfuscated database. Cool. Can the platform team build a platform in a way that allows a very simple self-serve experience Then again, helps as a, as a security team become a champion of the platform that you're building. So now you're bringing people into the fold and helping other organizations achieve, achieve their goals, and they're helping boost the platform that you guys are building as well. The same thing with Golden Paths. I'll say the same example. So same defaults, right? If you're spinning up a new service, you say, hey, if you try to build your own project, start your own service on your own, it's going to require two weeks of security review before you can go to production. Or if you use that starter that the platform team has built, you get that for free. Don't even worry about it. You're good to go to production. All we need is a one-day review to, to check your security. And then finally, with the platform, again, can you automate approval, right? Security teams don't want to be the bottleneck. They don't want to be the ones who are saying, hold up, like there's risk here, we got to stop you, you know, freeze everything. They don't want to be that, right? They don't want to be the bad guy. And so can you build things into the platform that enables them to automate those tasks too? And therefore, you're investing in automation and the things that really, really matter. And so getting towards the end here, I want to talk about measuring success, right? Because any great uh, product manager is thinking about, how am I going to measure the success of the product I'm building? 
right? In some cases, like I mentioned earlier, it could be retention metrics, it could be DAUs and MAUs, and all the things that you might care if you're a consumer product manager. But as a platform engineer, our most important outcome at the core is, am I actually reducing the bottlenecks that are preventing those business outcomes? Am I actually improving customer experience? Am I actually improving our cost and efficiency? Am I improving our time to market? And then I can take those key business outcomes and those bottlenecks and then break those down into key engineering metrics that I care about, right? So I might say, hey, the business really cares about time to market. And one of the things that we found is our PR cycle time is really long. Our CI is really slow. The build times are taking forever. Review, people are opening really big PRs and there's no automation around that kind of stuff. And so that's the key metric that we want to move. We want to build automation that's going to make that stuff easier. So now you have a key engineering metric that you can tie back to the North Star metric for the business. And so this is where you see things like engineering intelligence metrics, like your cycle time and Dora metrics and things like that. Qualitative feedback, you know, platform engineers obviously are trying to get qualitative feedback from their customers. Adoption, adoption and onboarding percentages to how many people are actually using your platform. Developer productivity, developer experience metrics. So really think about what are the metrics I can measure from an engineering standpoint at the most granular level and tie those back to the business outcomes that I care about. And so when you think about what platforms end up looking like sometimes, when you think about like, hey, I need visibility into my organization. I'm from Cortex. Cortex is an internal developer portal. And in many cases, your platform starts with something like this. It's a giant spreadsheet. We're like, hey, let's understand what the world looks like. And then let's go find our bottlenecks and go solve those things. And maybe you have six forks of the spreadsheet with different, different use cases. And so as you move past a world where it's a handful of teams operating on a handful of services, you really need to scale up that visibility. And so that's where an internal developer portal comes in. And so the way we think about it is internal developer portals are the foundation of platform engineering, right? We talk about ownership and accountability, reliability, operational readiness, all those kinds of things, right? But how can you do that if you don't have visibility? What's even out there today in the world and how do I assess the quality of those things and where those bottlenecks are? And so starting with your catalog, visibility into your services, your data pipelines, your infrastructure, then from there being able to define baselines of what good looks like through scorecards, right? How can you, how can you improve something you can't measure? Right? So how do you define the baselines and say, these are the bottlenecks we're finding, and here's how we're going to improve it. And so that, again, falls into inter internal developer portal, where you're able to score the quality of your infrastructure, your services, and define those baselines. And then finally, self-service workflows as well. So how do you create discoverability for the tools that you're building? Because the last thing you want is to create a fragmented ecosystem where you have 16 different tools, and your platform is broken up across 10 different apps. I want to be able to find those things in a single place. Right? So the portal is not just about being that foundation, but it's the ability for you, your developers to discover the tools that you're building. Because in many cases, and this is true for, for startups, right? One of the reasons we're here at the conference is we're trying to find the people that say, hey, look at the thing we're building. Look how cool this is. We're trying to find the users that, that have those problems, right? The same thing holds true for platform engineering. You found the issues, you found the bottlenecks, you built the products. Now you've got to make sure that your users can go and discover that. So making sure that you're making it discoverable, the developer portal is a great way of taking that to your end user, which are the developers. All right, very last slide here. Uh, the, very, the last takeaways. Developer platforms are extremely complex. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of components to a developer platform. Everything from reliability to security to automation to cloud infra, all these things are part of your, your platform and they're growing increasingly complex. And as a result, a well-designed, well-managed platform can actually improve your team throughput. Right? The more you can reduce those bottlenecks, the better your team will be off. And the most important thing, by adopting a product management mindset, you can build a better platform, right? How do you define better? How do you continuously improve? How do you make sure you're solving key problems? Adopt that product manager mindset. What is the North Star metric? What are the bottlenecks? What do my users care about? What value am I delivering? Solve that incrementally. Think about your personas. And all of a sudden, you built a great, great platform. And then finally, the platform of the, that, that your, port, your platform engineering is built on is the internal developer portal. It can be a great way for you to enable the platform engineering capabilities that you really, really care about. And if you're interested, uh, there is a guide, a white paper that we wrote, uh, the Platform Engineer's Guide to Building Platform Like a Product. Uh, there's a URL and a QR code. And there's also an interview guide in there. So if you're curious, if you're building out your platform team right now, a little bit about how to think about actually building your platform engineering team from the ground up. Thank you all so much. Again, I'm Ganesh from Cortex. Uh, we have a booth right around the corner, I think, in the 1800 aisle. Uh, I, there we go. 1881. That is our booth. Uh, I'll be around for a little bit. Uh, it's great. Thank you so much for coming out, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you, everyone.